Let's let's look at solving. Let's look at solving, kind of carrying off what we did yesterday with the multiplication property. Now, one of the last problems that we did was 5x is equal to negative 60. And we had this problem yesterday. We divided both sides by 5, right? Mm -hmm. What I want us to see is that, that that was actually dividing both sides by 5. But using the multiplication property, we can multiply both sides by the same amount. And what we can multiply both sides by is 1 fifth. Now, what's the connection between the coefficient <coughs> of 5 and 1 fifth? What's that connection? It's the reciprocal. It's the reciprocal. If you multiply a number, in this case 5 over 1, times its reciprocal, what do you get? One. You, you get just 1, right? Mm -hmm. So this guy is just x. And then on the right side, you have something very similar to what we had yesterday, which was negative 60 divided by 5, right? And that just gives me what? That just gives me negative 12. So if, if, if I know that, if I know that the reciprocal can be used to get your x by itself, that's going to be very useful for these next few problems that we're going to run across. Because now I can ask you to solve this guy. Solve 2 thirds x is equal to 20. I have a coefficient of x that's 2 thirds, but I don't want that 2 thirds there. And sometimes fractions can make you freak out, but you don't need to. In the last problem, I multiply times the reciprocal. So what's the reciprocal here? Three over two. So if I multiply the left side times 3 over 2, this is the reciprocal, and you would see that the 3's would reduce away as well as the 2's. Do you all agree? Mm -hmm. However, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. Do you all agree? So on the left side of this equation, <coughs> the 2's reduce to give you a 1, the 3's reduce to give you 1, and you have x by itself. What's going to happen on the right side? 3 times 20. You could do 3 times 20 and then divide it by 2, but before we do that, let's remember that 20 is 20 over 1, and let's reduce and make numbers smaller before we make them larger. Make your life easier. So 2 can reduce into the 20 10, ten times, and you get 30. Now, Mariah, what you were saying, we could multiply this, and if you did, you would have 60 in the numerator, 2 in the denominator, and it's still the same thing. But what you're going to find out is that if you actually do that multiplication on some of these problems, it's a little bit too much to handle. So let's avoid that if we can. <coughs> now how do you check how do you check these answers? How do you check your solutions? If you plug it back into the original, so if you were to check this guy, it shouldn't take much effort to do that. So I've got 2 thirds replacing the x with my proposed solution of 30. And I want to see, does that equal 20? Well, you see here that 3 goes into 30 10 times. And so, yes, 20 is equal to 20. Do you all agree? All right, let's try one more where we have to worry about a coefficient that is a fraction. Let's see what you guys can do on this one. If I have negative 14 ninths y is equal to 56 over 81. I want to get the y by itself, and I want to get rid of that coefficient. When my coefficient is an integer value, you know, a positive or negative whole number, you just divide by it. When it's a fraction, instead of dividing by it, which we could do, we want to do what? Don't divide by the fraction. Do what? Multiply, Multiply times. What's that fancy word? Multiply times the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of this guy? Nine over, nine over, nine over, nine over, 
14. Right. If you just do 9 over 14, let me show you what happens here. If you just do 9 over 14, the 9's reduce, the 14's reduce, but you still have this negative, right? So that's not really the reciprocal. You need negative 9 over 14. And of course, what you do on one side, you do on the other side. So multiply times negative 9 over 14. Okay. So when I do this, the 9's reduce to give you 1, the 14's reduce to give you 1. Okay. These two negatives will also reduce, because what's negative times negative? Positive. positive. So I'm going to be left with a positive y. Now on the right side, we've got to see how we're going to simplify this. Do you want to do 56 times 9? No. no? How can we reduce? 9 and 81. Now before you start reducing, and that's good, 9 and 81 will reduce, but before you do that, don't forget about your negative sign. I've got a positive times a negative, so what will my end result be in terms of a sign? It's a negative. It's, an import it's important that we identify that and we write that because a lot of times students start simplifying and they, they lose. They lose sight of the fact they had a negative. So 9 and 81 have a common factor of what? 9 goes in here once and in here 9 times. Do you all agree? Is there anything, any other simplifying I can do? 14 does not go into 56 I mean, three times. Four times. It goes in four times. Now, if you're not sure that 14 goes into 56, reduce it in a way that you know how. These guys have a common factor of 2 at least, right? 2 goes in here 28 times, and 2 goes in here 7 times. And then 28 over 7, now you see that the answer is 4. Okay? If you don't see it in this huge big picture of 56 divided by 14, piece by piece and you break it down. You're going to see how important that is later on this semester. So 7 goes in here once, 7 goes into 28 four times. So what factors do I have left in the numerator? 4 and what's in my denominator? 9. Nine. So if I do the reducing beforehand, I don't have to deal with large numbers. Do you know what would happen if you actually multiplied all this out? It's not going to look pretty. If you had multiplied it out, you would have had negative, was it 504 over, when you do 81 times 4, it gives you 4, 32, 33, carry the 3, and that's 11. So you would have, you would have reduced 504 over 1134. Is that what you really wanted to do? No. Keep the numbers small, keep them manageable, and it makes your life a lot easier.